In this video, I will demonstrate how you can install PyOS and set up your local network. I took some notes and put them in a GitHub repo. Uh, I will put the link in the description below. The first step is to go to raspberrypi.org to download the PyOS imager. You can choose a version of imager uh, based on what operating system you have. Since I already installed the Py imager, uh, I will just open it. Installing PyOS is extremely easy, much easier than installing any virtual machine or installing an OS onto a hard drive. All you need to do is to burn the image into a, a micro SD card and then plug the SD card into your Raspberry Pi. First of all, you need to plug in your SD card and select it. Then click Choose OS. You may not want to install the OS now. Uh, instead, you will need to scroll down to Erase and format your disk to FAT32. The official documentation says that uh, Raspberry Pi OS only supports FAT16 or FAT32. However, since I'm using a SD card that is 64 gigabyte large, and any SD card larger than 32 gigabyte uh, is by default formatted to be XFAT, so I will need to erase it. So I will click right and yes. After erasing uh, the SD card, you can start installing the PyOS. There are many other operating systems that you can choose from. Uh, I will just use the default uh, PyOS 32-bit. Uh, you can also choose uh, Ubuntu if you want and you can also use some custom image. So if you go to Google and search for Kali Raspberry Pi and go to Offensive Security, they provide the Raspberry Pi version of Kali Linux. So you can download the image and click Use Custom to uh, install some custom uh, OS image. I will just install the recommended 32-bit PyOS. Now the installation is completed. Before putting up the system, we need to consider something else. This is a problem that you may encounter while setting up the network. There are basically three cases. The first one being you have a monitor, you have a mouse, and a keyboard. Then that's perfect. You can just plug in the SD card and boot the system. After booting to the system, you can set up your Wi-Fi with graphical interface. If you have an Ethernet cable, it's also easy. You can just plug in the Ethernet cable and boot up the system. Uh, then you will have internet connection. You can SSH into your machine. In the worst case, you have none of those. In that case, you have no internet connection, then how can you interact with your Pi? So next, I will show you how you can set up your network connection before booting up the machine. On the official website, they have a tutorial setting up a Raspberry Pi headless. So this shows you how you can set up your Wi-Fi connection before booting up the system. First of all, you go to your drive. Unfortunately, um, after installation, uh, the SD card is ejected. So I will have to mount the SD card again. We need to create some configuration file on the SD card. I will open the boot drive uh, by dragging it to a terminal. The other way is to open the terminal, type cd, and drag the boot drive to the terminal. Here are all the files on the boot drive. I'm going to touch a file called wpasupplicant.conf. And we will copy the configuration into the file. 
and you will need to make some modification here. For country, you will need to enter your own country code. If you don't know your country code, you can go to Wikipedia and find the two-letter country code. So since I live in uh, Canada, I will use CA. For SSID, you will need to use your uh, Wi-Fi name. So for example, the Wi-Fi I'm using is 2305-F-5G. But if you have a 5G network, you may not want to use it because sometimes Raspberry Pi uh, doesn't connect to it. And for PSK, uh, it's the Wi-Fi password. To make sure the Raspberry Pi connects to a Wi-Fi successfully, I will use another 2G Wi-Fi I have. It is very weird that uh, my Raspberry Pi doesn't connect to 5G Wi-Fi uh, if I set my country to be CA. Um, I have to set it to be Bolivia, uh, which is BO, and it will work. But here I will just use 2G. Um, after we boot into the system, we can always change our Wi-Fi to 5G network. One more thing we need to do is to create a SSH file. It's an empty file called SSH. This allows us to SSH into the machine. Then we can eject the boot drive uh, plug it into the Raspberry Pi and connect it to power. Then the Raspberry Pi should boot up automatically. Now the Raspberry Pi is booted up uh, and we can try to SSH into the machine. If you're using a monitor, uh, you don't have to follow steps here because uh, you don't have to use SSH. You can just interact with the graphical interface. Now I'm SSH into one of my other Raspberry Pi and I'm using raspberry.local. Um, this is because Raspberry is my host name. By default, a Raspberry Pi should have a host name of Raspberry Pi. So you can SSH into your, your new Raspberry Pi with uh, SSH pi at raspberrypi.local. Uh, here I already changed the Raspberry Pi Pi's hostname to Raspberry. But if you're setting up your first Raspberry Pi, uh, you don't need to worry about this. You can just use Raspberry Pi as a hostname. But if you ha already have a Pi with this hostname, you may want to change it so that Raspberry Pi is available for the new Raspberry Pi. So you can do sudo recipe config, then go to system options and hostname. So here you can change your host name. I will change it to something else called maybe Raspi. Then finish and reboot. You will need to wait a while until it's rebooted. Then you can SSH into the system again. Now let's try to SSH again. SSH pi at raspberry.local. Uh, notice that this is not the new pi I'm setting up. This is another one I already have. So as you can see, we cannot connect to it because we already changed the host name to raspi now let's try the new host name ssh pi at raspi.local and success now let's try to ssh into the new raspberry pi uh, remember that raspberry pi is the default host name so i will ping raspberry pi to local and 64 bytes means uh, the machine is up and we can find the machine with this host name. So if we try SSH pi at raspberry pi dot local, we should be able to SSH into it. So I will type in the password. The password by default is raspberry and we are in the system. Method two is to use IP address. So you will need to use some IP scanning tool like a map to scan your network before putting up your Raspberry Pi. I will explain this command in a minute. We can see that 12 hosts are up 
then let's boot up the new Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi is booted and let's run again. What I'm doing here is to see the difference between and after the new Raspberry Pi is booted up. So we see that 13 hosts are up and 192.168.1.99 is the new IP address. So we know that uh, that must be the new Raspberry Pi. So if we SSH Pi at this local IP, we should be able to SSH into the new Raspberry Pi. Uh, again, the default password is Raspberry. And we are logged in. Next, I want to briefly explain why I am uh, scanning this IP address. First of all, we need to know how our uh, local IP look like. On the right hand side, I have a color Linux running in Docker. On a Linux machine, we can use ifconfig to see the network interfaces. The first one is our local IP and the second one is uh, local host. So what we want is actually inet. So you can ifconfig and grab for inet. On Mac, we can also use ifconfig. It's the same command and I will grab for inet. There are many inet, but uh, now we only care about the inet without 6. inet is for IPv4 and inet 6 is for IPv6. So from this, we know that uh, the local IP for my Mac is uh, 192.168.1.66. You can see that the net mask is 0xffffff00. FF is in hexadecimal, uh, it's one byte and in decimal is 255, in binary it's 81, so it's 8 bits of 1. So the net mask in decimal is 255, 255, 255, 0. Each 255 has 8 bits, so 3 255 have 24 bits. And this means the first three numbers are fixed, 192, 168, and 1 are fixed, and the last number can range from 0 to 255. So the unmap scanning command is basically scanning 256 IP addresses given the first three numbers fixed and the last number ranging from 0 to 255. I will show a few more examples. On Windows, it's ipconfig instead of ifconfig. And instead of grep, I will use find string to find ipv4. The v is lowercase. This gives us uh, the IP address of my Windows machine. If we show all the results for ipconfig and find my Ethernet adapter, you can see that we have the same uh, subnet mask, 3, 255s, and a 0. And the default gateway is basically the router address. On a Mac, you can click into network, go to Wi-Fi, advanced, TCP IP. From here, you can also see uh, the subnet mask and router address. On a Linux machine, you can use route-n to view the same information. If you have access to a router, which is the default gateway, uh, you can see more information here. If you go to DHCP server configuration, you can see that the IP address actually range from 10 to 250. That means the devices connected to your network will have a IP address from 10 to 250. After logging into the Raspberry Pi, the first thing you need to do is change your password. You can type password and enter the current password, which is Raspberry, and the new password. Here, I'm just using password. That's not safe. If we log out and try again, enter the new password, it should work.